welcome back to another video. I have come over to see the famous wheelie machine. This is the world's fastest, the world's quickest, and the world's most powerful K-series Lotus there is. So let's get in, let's have a look, because this is absolutely bonkers. the world's fastest Lotus Elise on the planet. It's all built in his shed, trial and error, just developing, using logic. I wouldn't say cutting corners because that's not the right say so. He wants to hit the goals but without ridiculous budgets. And I'll be honest with you, this thing is phenomenal. <laughs> Certainly, hats off to Lee. It is such an impressive build. This was going to be a time attack car, but he didn't enjoy it. It wasn't really for him, and he went on to do drag racing, got the bug, and this is where we're at. It gets addictive. Basically, the body is all fiberglass. Everything has been replaced for weight. If you can make this thing as light as possible, things down to door bolts all being titanium just to lose bits of weight to make it as light as possible. I think he said it was 680 kilograms. That is phenomenally light. This did have a full aero package. I remember this when it had giant splitters and wings and all that for time attack. Now it's got giant radials in the class that's not full slick so they can be used on the road. They're on the front, normal road tires. Looks like it's running the original Lotus brakes. The magic is all in there. <laughs> K series from the Lotus. And if anyone who knows these engines will know they were renowned for not being a very good engine. But Lee seems to have tamed this thing and has dialed it in to make an astounding 850 horsepower on methanol. <laughs> into i love this thing that there is the oil filter housing you can see what your oil looks like the reason for that is when you're using methanol it does go past the rings and into the sump so it goes milky so you have to maintain your oil that there helps because it's clear so because of methanol there's no intercooler you have charge temperatures that you need to maintain on the inlet system so these are additional injectors to spray methanol into the charge pipes to cool the intake temps when these failed if the intake temps were around 110 degrees he fixed them and it dropped the intake temperatures to around 70 degrees right so that's 10 grand yeah, did. <laughs> can't believe you're spinning it to 10 grand because if you're limited on how much cylinder pressure you can make 
only way to make more power is with more RPM. I yes. don't want to rev it to 10. That's the only way I can make the power. What people don't understand sometimes is horsepower is torqued by RPM. Yes. So, so the more, if you flatline your torque, say I can't go above this amount of torque, but I need this amount of power, you just keep increasing that up the RPM until you reach that power level at the same torque. Then you've got looks like a custom inlet manifold with eight injectors, 2200 cc injectors the engine's still technically a long bolt so when i mean by long bolt that means the head goes on the block bolts which hold it all down go straight through the engine through the head through the block through the girdle and to the actual the mains caps and bolt down question yes your clamping force on your bottom end when you put the long bolt in why can't you clamp more and then line bore it to suit because if you look in here, right, there's your bolt holes. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. If I put a bolt through there and you shine a light in there, you can see the bolt. Like, so in other words, this section here... It's is not support... Oh, it? right, so it's not supported down the bottom. No, so what happens if we put this head up loads... You're going to end up clamp... Right, okay. okay. So it's not just the actual crankcase that's the issue. The head will clamp. The collapse will... Right, got you. The one thing we have done is um, on a block, there's dowels, okay? But there's only two. And the way I thought about it is if you want to reinforce a bridge, you reinforce its base, don't you? Yes. More load. So on my engine, what I've done is I've machined uh, dowels into every single one. So I've got 10 dowels. Okay. Okay. And then I run, I've now got uh, 11 mil head studs that I've had made. And that's allowed me to go from 50 foot pounds to 65 foot pounds. Right, okay. Okay, which, which has helped with the, the clamp load. If I go to 70, the bearing clearance starts to crush. Really, for this power, you should have like 100 foot pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do that on this engine, where you've only got minimal clamping force on a head, basically a long bolt. Let's say my Vauxhall. My Vauxhall, I think it's 85 foot pounds to clamp my head down. This thing, I think it was 50 foot pounds. So to run huge amounts of boost and huge amounts of power, keeping that together is unreal there's not been no modifications of a bigger bolt because you can't clamp it anymore because the crank journals go out of round that just makes this more impressive stripped out lotus elise with a cage doesn't run a digital dash or anything of, of that kind of caliber because you can run a small tablet these days on a small laptop you can do basic tuning basic adjustments on the fly plus you can see every bit of data you ever need basic little switches to make it road legal indicators lights and fuel because again this is still road legal a lot of the development work and tuning and mapping side type of thing is all done on the road the quave sequential shifter which again if you know that's the strain gauge we got you got the strain gauge again on it so it does the ignition cut. I would have thought the buttons for the launch control. Is it a button? I don't think it is. It might be. The nice hydraulic handbrake. Very lightweight seats. Oh, as for the uh, EGTs, when he's mapping with methanol, rather than look at the uh, air fuel ratios, it looks at EGTs a lot more. GTX 42 Turbo. This thing is a work of art. It has these giant Haltech coils. He was having problems with basically running out of energy on the spark plugs when the methanol was going in. Twin lambers. Now the reason for the twin lambers are, one's for the fueling, as in uh, petrol, normal like 99 octane. Runs like a 14 Ford air fuel ratio, which is what you should kind of see. That'll go down to probably a 10 air fuel ratio. And then this one is the expensive methanol one, which will drop right down so you can see like seven AFR. So you need a specialist lamber for methanol, normal lamber for normal pump fuel. The tuning side to the methanol on this, such, such hard work because, because again, you don't really do much with the AFRs. It's all a lot done with EGTs, which I've learned that today. Never knew that before. That's why coming out and talking to people about their build, and especially when people are super knowledgeable like Lee, it's always good to learn, ask questions, and bounce ideas off. I would have thought that's some kind of breather tank down there. You've got the Quave sequential gearbox. So it's twin gated there and there. I would have thought because it's a twin scroll turbo, potentially. Yeah, twin scroll turbo to assist, obviously, with the help with a bit of spooling. The original starter motor is held on with M12s. He's changed them for M8 Titanium because, save weight, it'll do the job. That is the particular of this car, is to shed every gram, every bit of weight, basically take everything out of it to make it go fast and light. This thing is unreal to look at. The engineering-wise, 
is phenomenal. So to put it in perspective, Lee is not a trained tuner. He's not a trained basically engine builder. It's not his job. But if anyone who knows Lee, he is very, very knowledgeable. Goes down to the trial and error. It's the saying that I like with him is if you've not got data, it's just an opinion. And that's the basically the whole thing with this car is rather than taking opinions, he will try and test it. I think you'll agree. This is a mental, mental car. <laughs> And to be running in the eights, this thing is fast. I don't think people appreciate how fast an eight second car is. So this goes down to, again, this car is definitely not money, no object. So to put it in perspective, this is the ethanol content he uses. This is the methanol content because technically you don't need the fancy fuels if you can work around this. Well, this is why I love this car because it is very much home built, tried and tested. This here is glue because the lower chassis are glued and not bolted. I'm gonna sign this video off. What an amazing car, an amazing build. Anyone who's like me, who follows my channel, we are builders, technically not drivers. We enjoy the building and development side. Lee has gotta be the king of that for me. It is trial and error, use logic, try this, try that, and I love it. And to be fair, I've learned quite a lot today. The open deck block, liners, which are just push fit, rod bolts that go all the way through, an open,